So I figured out why they're searching for the 144,000. And some of you will know what I'm talking about, some of you won't. But there are reportedly 144,000 humans that hold a special gene, genetic code, DNA, or some sort of special something that the, there's an unseen hand searching for. So I was like, why are they looking for the 144,000? So from what I download, and I have a goddess that walks with me called Queen Nana. You guys can look her up. She said there was 144 original gods, and each of them made a thousand mini gods, which gives a, a rise to 144,000 gods, or people with a god factor, god gene, DNA, certain DNA. Okay, so then I'm sitting here today and I'm like, why is it so important to find these 144,000? Well, the download I received was 144,000 can spark everyone they meet. They can literally awaken everyone they meet just by being, just by being. They can get people's third eye vibrating. <laughs> they can awaken people out of the matrix. And I think that sounds about fucking right. She's off, but she's on to something. I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. So, as you heard, the chick in the video, which that was sent to me yesterday. And um, at first, I was just going to leave it where it was. But, uh, you know, through some conversations I'm having, you know, with fellow believers, brothers, you know, um, I thought, why not tap into it? And as you can see, the uh, lady in the uh, video was speaking of the 144,000. All right. And as the scriptures tell you. Our people have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. See, so she tied the 144,000 to, you know, a um, off philosophy. However, the concept is something that we can tie to the scriptures as the 144,000, all right, are the first fruit spirits, all right, who were chosen from the foundation of the earth, all right, to be the ride or die body or church. All right, linked with Yahweh Shai, all right, the fellow joint heirs, all right, through whom everything else, all right, and every other spirit of the nation of Israel will be, all right, joint heirs as well, all right. That's the first born church as the scriptures talk about. Let's get that. First born, all right, church. I believe it's uh, as a matter of all right this is the book of hebrews the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse when you come into this truth all right you're being aligned all right with the uh wisdom given from the firstborn church so it says here but ye are come unto mount zion unto the city of the living power the heavenly jerusalem all right into an innumerable company of angels all right which they're guiding this truth all right, there's angels surrounded around each member of the elect. All right, and you know, the the gospel we preach, you know, is uh, as the scriptures say, the angels are sent to help. All right, and keep us in the way. The scriptures say, where two or more are gathered in my name, all right, the angels are are, are gathered about. Okay, to the general assembly, to the church of the firstborn. All right, which are written in heaven. All right, and God the judge, all right, of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Now, let's look up this word, firstborn. I don't believe I've ever looked it up. Let's look it up together. And as you can see, all right, Protocols 4416, all right, the 144,144, which was supposed to be writing from right to left anyway, but as you can see, it's a six there. Victory over the beast, his image, and his mark, all right, comes through Yahweh Shai. And the testimony given unto these men. All right. And as you read it, Protocols. All right. Firstborn of man or beast of Hamashiach, the firstborn of all creation. All 
right? And we know that Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created, all right? But then you have also the first fruit spirits. That's what we're going to tap into. Now, let's also get the book of Colossians. Let's just type in firstborn. It should bring it up. Okay. Should be in Colossians. This is the book of Colossians. 1 and 15 speaking of Yahweh Shai who was the image of the invisible power the firstborn of every creature for by him are all things created in heaven and are in earth visible and in invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities of powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist he is the head of the body. So we know that there was a body with him. And that goes back to the understanding of the Allah Hayim. In the beginning, the Allah Hayim created the heavens and the earth. Okay. He is the he is the head of the body and the church, who was the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in him all things might have preeminence. Okay. So he is the head of the body. All right. The church. Now, again, we always break down Genesis 1 and 1, right? Okay. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right. And when you look up this word, God. Okay. Allah Hayam. Rulers, judges, divine ones, angels works or special possessions of the most high all right and at the head of those special possessions at the head of those rulers was hamashiach who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ all right but there was a church all right created all right for him by him through the inspiration of the most high to be his ride or die body all right and that's a word you know to help you understand in today's terms all right but they are faithful that's the original church and the scriptures tell you real quick before we get into it in Zechariah the uh, 12th chapter in the 8th verse it says in that day Yahweh shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble among them shall be as David all right all of our people are going to be loved of the most high because he's going to put the law statutes commandments in us and the house of David shall be as God. See? As the angel of Yahweh before them. And who's that angel before them? Yahweh Shai. And again, this word, the house of David, shall be as what? You look at that word. God. All right? Which is what? Allah Hayyam. That same word. So we're going to go back to our original estate. All right? But in these times, it starts with us receiving this word. All right, which takes us back to the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. Okay. And it says this. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Sion and with him an hundred and forty four thousand having their father's name written in their foreheads. All right. And when you look in other um, versions of the Bible, it tells you you have the father and the son's name. Okay. But they are sealed with the truth. They are sealed with the instruction, all right, which is going to get the job done through a particular testimony. And this is the government that will rule the new world to come. The lamb in the 144,000, that will be your government body, all right? We talk about the tabernacle of David. That's what Yahweh Shah is going to establish, a government. And these will be the heads of that government, you see? As it's talked about in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, all right, in the sixth verse, okay? So as you keep reading about this 144,000, it says, and, a, and I heard a voice from heaven, as it were many waters, and a voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the beast, and before the elders, that no man could learn that song save the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So the 144,000 have a particular message. You see, and as that uh, lady said, all right, we can call her sister. I mean, although she's off 
and her philosophy. Um, we'll just say that sister, although she's not a part of what we believe, she's still an Israelite, all right? But she's just, you know, off, you know, and many of our people are off, but as time goes, the Lord may bring some of these people into repentance through the message of these men. And as she said, these particular men, all right, are gonna be sought after, right? And that they have a, 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 a way of impacting people, all right? In what way though, according to the volume of the book, all right? Because people wanna take the 144,000 and link it to their philosophy. Well, well the 144,000 comes from the scriptures. See, and no man can learn that song. Let's look at this word for song, all right? I never looked that up. Maybe something to it may not be. A song, lay, an ode. <laughs> and an ode, I've always seen this where it's like a, a dedication. It says a lyric, poem, in the form of an address to a particular subject. And the subject is to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? Often elevated in a style or manner and written in varied or regulated all right or irregular meter so the way that this 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 book is written all right you can only get the understanding saved by one of these men through the most high god yahweh all right who uh gave everything to yahweh shai Let's see what the root word says to the praise of anyone to sing all right and we're singing praises to the lord right it says, and as a matter of fact, let's get a script because this 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 gospel that we have, this understanding came from the spiritual realm. It didn't come from this world. It was sent from the spiritual realm. All right. And when you get Psalms, the 40th chapter, as she said, these men are able to impact whoever they come in contact with. All right. And that's for those who have ears to hear. This is the book of Psalms 40 and 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Or as a matter of fact, let's start at 1. Psalms 40 and 1. A psalm of David, basically. I waited patiently for Yahweh, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. All right. And there's many of our people before you heard this truth. You, you, you had so many questions. You may have been a part of a church or a philosophy or a religion that, you know, you know where you believed the Bible, but you, you were yearning for understanding. It wasn't really fulfilling you, and you didn't know what was going on inside of you. You see what I'm saying? But what, what the Lord did, all right, because we all have an allotted time to hear this truth, all right? He sent teachers, see? And... Ultimately, when you, when you heard those words, okay, what the Lord did was the process of education happened. The true understanding of what educate means is to draw out what is in you. And we all have that allotted time where we're going to hear this truth. All right, you may have heard this truth at one point in your life and be like, ah, oh, whatever. Okay, yeah, I'll, you know, it wasn't that, you know, but, but there was a point where it, it clicked. See, and that was the Lord hearing your cry because all of the elect are yearning for the truth, you see, in some shape, form, or fashion, all right? Whether they know exactly what they're yearning for or not, the Lord hearkens unto that cry and he gives you what? The, uh, the, the, the truth, as the scriptures say, the engrafted word. Let's get that real quick. Meekness. This is the true process of education, Okay. This is the book of James 1. All right, and this is what we did when we heard this word. James 1 and 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So this word engrafted. Okay, engrafted. All right, and pitos inborn and planted by nature and planted by others instruction okay and i have this uh let's see if i can get this precept here boom sirach 1 and 14 the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and it was created with the faithful in the womb this is why the lord told jeremiah before i knew you all right 
uh, before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. All right, so we were all preordained, each member of the elect, to receive this truth. All right, but it would be through teachers. All right, and those teachers are of that 144,000, all right, who have the new song and the understanding. But each member have the, the, the truth implanted in them. And when you receive this word, you are then educated. Let's get the true understanding of educated. So, again, the, the lady, okay, she was off. All right. But she she was on to something. Okay, let's get the word for educate in the um let's see here. <laughs> yeah, I found it. Um the Latin root for educate is educare, which means to draw out from within, to draw out what is already in you. You see? And that's why the scriptures call this the engrafted word. It was implanted by others' instruction, but there's going to be a time, you see, where you hear the word, as it says in the book of Isaiah. Right now, all of these precepts are hitting me, so give me a second. This is the book of Isaiah 30 and 20. It says, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, meaning we'd be in hell, we'd be in a situation where we're suffering. All right, eating, you know, the, the, these defiled foods, we in captivity, we're, you know, in subject to payments. And that's a judgment from us breaking that first covenant. All right. And we're, we're, we're suffering from that. All right. But when you come into this truth, you understand why you're suffering. See, and then you learn, you know, the truth from the minute of the Lord. All right. And you understand your Hawashi sacrifice and it moves you to repent. You feel crushed. You feel you, you have a meek and contrite spirit. All right? That's the sacrifice. It says here, Isaiah 30 and 20, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, yet not shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Okay? There was a point where the Lord had it to where Esau had legislation where we couldn't say particular things. See, but now, all right, the Lord has put the spirit on Esau to pass particular laws to where we would have freedom of speech in particular parts of the earth, mainly here in Babylon and Great. So the teachers will no longer be removed into a corner anymore, right? And thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn from the right hand and when ye turn to the left. This is the way. Walk ye in it. So going back to the book of Proverbs, or Psalms, the 40th chapter, Psalms 40 and 1, I waited patiently for Yahweh, all right, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. We were in a horrible pit of lies before we came into this truth, out of miry clay. Now, when you're in miry clay, it's hard to move forward freely. You're trapped. Your, your, your feet are heavy. You got to pick it up out of the mud and then to go forward. It's really hard to move forward and move freely about when you're in miry clay. And the the, the, under, <laughs> the funny thing was when you read Daniel, the second chapter, this beast system is likened into miry clay. You see, we were trapped, okay, alienated from the, the, the true understanding of who our power was, who God was, who his son was, who we are, what's our purpose, why we're in this situation. Why are we, why are these people ruling? What's next? What happened in the past that it's like this, you see, but you're opened up to all of those things when you hear the new song, which gives praise unto Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Let's watch. All right. And he brought me also out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Okay. He established my goings, man. <laughs> Now we can walk freely through the Holy Spirit. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in Yahweh. All right. Bahashem Yahweh Shah. You see that? So through the new song, which who has the new song? The elect. All right. The, 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 the tabernacle of David. See, the 144,000 were given that song. All right. And those men are here in the earth today. Some of them could be in the spirit world. 
all right? But there's a, a whoever of those men are here on the earth today, they have been given the new song, which is praise unto the Lord and ode to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay? It says, Blessed is the man that maketh Yahweh his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor turn aside to lies. And many of our people are going to bow the knee to the image of Baal because they have not been impacted by what is true. They have not been given ears to hear and eyes to see. Okay? So now, let's read that again. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in Yahweh. And how would they do that? All right, through hearing the new song. Let's get Revelation, the 14th chapter again. <laughs> okay, so the 144,000, all right, are the only ones... As we read here in the middle of Revelation 14, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. All right. These are they which were not defiled with women. All right. Again, as Paul said, all right, it says, for they are virgins. See, these are they that are not defiled with women. And when you go into the strange woman, we just type it in. We ain't got to go too much into it. That's representative of harlots, philosophies, okay? Okay? Proverbs 5 and 3, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood sharpened in the two-edged sword. And that's all of these philosophies that our people are into. All right. It may make them, you know, feel good. It, 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 you know, it plays to their emotions, their flesh. You know, our people have itching ears. See, but her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. It's going to lead to destruction. See, so the strange woman is likened unto all of those philosophies. All right. There's other precepts on it as well. And it says, for they are virgins. What did Paul say in a book? All right. Of. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, in the second verse. All right. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Hamashiach. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai. All right, and we see many of our people being drawn away from the reality of what this Bible is talking about by what all of those strange women, all of those different philosophies, pride, self-will. See, but the job of the elect, the job of those 144,000 men is to keep the church in unison, all right, with the Most High through Yahweh Shai, all right? And this is why the bride is to prepare herself, see? The church, the bride, is to prepare herself, okay? And the Lord has sent heads of the church to help in that process, which Paul is likening himself in that position, all right? I've espoused you to one husband, so that I may present you to as a virgin to Hamashiach. So the 144,000, all right, as you read here, these are they which are not defiled with women, okay? They are virgins. They were they were created to, you know, ultimately once they get this understanding, because the way we will wake up in these latter days will be out of an uncircumcised state. We will be Gentiles. There will be a falling away. But after three days and a half, the Lord would what the spirit of life would enter into us. OK, and the Lord will put men as at the heads of that process, which would lead unto the day that we're delivered. OK, so it says these are they which were not defiled with women. Okay, for they are virgins. All right, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are the original disciples and apostles. All right, the original followers of Yahweh Shai. All right, the firstborn church. All right, and when you look up this word follow, these are they which follow. I never looked this word up either. Okay, <laughs> to follow, the word is. Strong's G, 190, Akalutheo, Akalutheo. To follow one who proceeds, join him at his attendant, accompany him, join one as a disciple. 
okay, in the original order, what was the original order of the disciples, all right, in the, the book of uh, Genesis 1 and 1, to create the heaven and the earth, that was the original order, see, but then they were supposed to come to the earth, all right, and, and rule the creation that they created, all right, but eventually there was a falling, and it all started with Adam, the first, all right, king and priest, all right, on earth, all right, to, 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 to be dealt with directly from on high through the most high. And then, of course, there was supposed to be the church with the sons of God, okay? But ultimately, to join one as a disciple, to become his disciple, to side with his party, ooh, heavy, the root word, all right? <laughs> the alpha, the beginning, wow. The root word goes to the beginning. Hamashiach is the alpha, right? And even when you uh, uh, go to Revelation or Genesis 1 and 1, when you go to this word beginning, in the beginning, what's actually being presented unto you? All right? The word is Ra'ashiath. First, beginning, best, chief, choice part. The, the, the root word Ra'ash, head, top, summit. All right, upper part. This is the elect, the beginning. All right, head. All right, chief, city, nation, family, priest. See, so this is the original priesthood. All right, and again, you have the blessing, all right, of receiving words directly from those men, all right, as they're here in these decrepit bodies. Okay, some of those first fruit spirits that were with Yahweh Shine in the beginning, the 144 are back here today to teach, to guide the flock. Okay? It says here, and we'll get that, and uh, we'll go to Ephesians for that. So these were uh, redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High, unto the Lamb. So when you look at this word, first fruits, okay? First fruit. The word in the Greek is a parquet, okay? A parquet. All right? And you get an understanding of this under that first covenant, who were the uh, first fruits? It was the, 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 uh, the Levites. See? But that was just a resemblance of something that was already had already taken place in the heavens. But that's another lesson for another time. Okay? And we have the feast of first fruits, where you gather all of the first of your increase and you bring it to the temple, right? Well, that happened in the spiritual realm with the first fruit spirits. All right. And I'll just get to the point. Person superior in excellence to others of the same class. Okay. The first fruit spirits superior in excellence to those of the same class. So there is rank and order amongst our nation. All right. Which our people. All right. Don't see it that way. All right. But we will see. All right. When the Lord has the final say. Okay. It says and in their mouth was found no gal. But they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. So they are blameless. All right. They're, they're, as the scriptures say in the book of Ezra. All right. Um, let's get it real quick. Uh, second Ezra. See if we can pull that up. Second Ezra, the second chapter. Second Ezra, the second chapter. And let's see here. In the 17th verse, fear not thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. For thy help, I will send my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah, which had already had their prophecy. So this is just symbolic of the prophets. All right, this is this is uh, taking place. Esdras was in the, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the Persian, the Medio Persian Empire. All right, Isaiah and Jeremiah was during the. Uh, the time of the Babylonians ruling. All right, they weren't sent into the Persian Empire. So, what is this talking about? This is this is a spiritual saying. He's telling us, "For thy help, I will send my servants, the servants, the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits." So, their counsel. All right, their their words is going to lead to the kingdom. 
and as many fountains flowing with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies whereby will fill thy children with joy. So ultimately, through their words, through their prophecy, would you know uh, the the church be awakened, and the kingdom would eventually be spoken to existence. All right, through the prophets. All right, so in their mouth was found no guile because their counsel was sanctified, purified. All right, by the Most High through Yahweh Shai and the holy angels help to guide this process. You see, verse six, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. So ultimately, this angel, all right, represents the angels that are helping, all right, to use the men of the Lord. All right, because as the scriptures say, keep thee in the way. Let's get that Psalms 91. It should be. All right, Psalms 91 and 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All right, they will protect us. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. They will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on the stone. So ultimately, these the, the angels are helping to guide the process. Of course, it's Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, but there's angels sent to aid in this process of this word going out through giving you, you know, particular understandings, putting the spirit on you to do particular lessons as we go out on the highways and the byways. We don't, before we turn on the camera, you know, some brothers have, you know, write down notes and, you know, which the angels even guide that process. But for the most part, as we get to flowing, we just press record and what comes out, comes out, even in this lesson. Okay? I didn't, uh, you know, I just saw that video yesterday and as I'm having a conversation, you know, with uh, fellow believers, boom, you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this lesson. So the angels guide all of this. So as you read here, the angels have what? You know, the the... the or, or it says, I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and people and tongue. Saying with a loud voice as we go out on the highways and the byways, we're lifting our voices up as a trumpet, saying, Fear the Most High, give glory unto him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made the heaven, all right, and the earth, and the fountains of waters. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is all created by the Most High, but he did it through his right hand, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, all right, and the firstborn church helped take a part in that process, okay, so as the Tabernacle of David is being rebuilt, they were helping with that process as well, and they've each been given, all right, a, uh, a uh, you know, a measure pursuant to the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, all right, in the seventh verse, but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. See? He has given every one of us a special gift through generosity, which is the grace period. It's a gift of Hamashiach. Wherefore he said that he has descended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. This is how we get the victory. See, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What does the scripture say in Revelation, the 12th chapter? <laughs> All right, Revelation, the 12th chapter, and the 11th verse, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb when he ascended, when he, when he descended and came to the lower parts of the earth, his blood was shed, okay, which that sealed the deal. And by the word of their testimony, all right, when he ascended back on high, he can now send down the Holy Spirit and give each member of the elect gifts. And it starts with those 144,000 spirits. So yeah, when you come across their words, you're impacted to repent. You're impacted. And see, there's going to come a point where the, the, the so-called white is going to get so crazy and certain miracles are going to start happening that Esau is going to come after us. The true gods of the earth are here. And see, there's nothing Esau can do to block that process. He's trying to pray, spray chemtrails. He's trying to put things in the food. He's trying to manipulate our D to the N to the A to, to sort of, you know, change the outcome. Because within us is our programming of who we are. But it's all guided by the spirit. But then you have the D to the N to the A as uh, 
the book of uh let's just get Psalms 139 real quick. Okay. And we'll go back to those scriptures that I was reading and we'll get a few more and close it out. When you get Psalms 139, all right, Psalms 139. Um let's see here. All right, because we, we just read that you know, wisdom was created with the faithful in a womb. Okay, we know that the Lord told Jeremiah, all right, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and ordained thee a prophet. So he put it in his members, all right, but it's the spirit given unto us to guide it all, all right? We have to be alive on earth to preach this word. That's why Paul said, you know, I would love to be back in the spiritual realm with Yahweh Shai, which is far better, but for, for the for the benefit of the church, all right, we have to be on earth and preach, okay? And it's a, it, 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 it weighs you down, the, you know, the, the watching, the, the you know, it, it's a lot, but we enjoy it, we love it. And most people don't see the importance of us because the way we look, you know, we come lowly, but that's how the Lord wanted it, so that the elect can, can receive the word and the power of the word through what it is, not through a gimmick. It's the importance of sticking to the simplicity in Yahweh Shai. This is Psalms 139, and I'll get it in the NLT 15. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, all right, as I was woven when you're in your mother's womb, all right, when you're in the, you know, being formed in the belly. I was woven, all right, together in the dark of the womb, okay? And that whole time, each individual who was being formed is being formed for their purpose and fulfilling prophecy whether it be to be born just to eat drink be merry to be born to be a ruler of the, the heathen all right to be born to, to you know grow up and help to form the haragma whatever the lord wants you to be born for for his purpose all right everybody's subject to it but then you have the prophets <laughs> you saw me before i was born Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. So all of us have been given <laughs> a, a, a vision, a, a, a mission before we were even born. All right. And that, again, I know I, I quoted it, but let's get Jeremiah 1 and 5. All right. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. All right. By what? Spirit. See? See? the first fruit spirits and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctify thee all right what did we just read in esdras whose counsel i have sanctified all right what does this word sanctified mean purified man cleansed so there's a like when we say 100 percent truth it ain't of us it's that the lord is giving you the full understanding through particular men on earth and, and a lot of people are afraid to take that on. The scriptures say, put therefore the on the elect. So people get offended at hearing 100% truth. But we ain't saying we're perfect as men. The 100% truth means that what's been sent down from heaven, all right, is, is, is full and will lead you to everlasting life. The scriptures say, take heed through the doctrine, for through it, you will be able to save yourself and those who hear you. It's in the book of Timothy's. The word is kodash, to consecrate, all right, sanctify, prepare, dedicated, to be hollow. It's a set apart doctrine, set apart from everything in this world, even everything in Israel, all right, because there's in Israel you have all of these weird philosophies. To be sanctified, to be consecrated, to be hollow, to be tabooed, all right, uh, honored, treated as sacred. So the Lord has 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 a, a sacred doctrine out here and I and I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet to the nations okay so how, how the victory is going to come through the, that 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 doctrine okay so what she said she was off but she was on to something all right and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death so I figured out why they're searching for the 144,000 and some of you will know what I'm talking about some of you won't but there are reportedly 144,000 humans 
that hold a special gene, genetic code, DNA, or some sort of special something that the, there's an unseen hand searching for. So I was like, why are they looking for the 144,000? So from what I download, and I have a goddess that walks with me called Queen Nana. You guys can look her up. She said there was 144 original gods, and each of them made a thousand mini gods, which gives a, a rise to 144,000 gods, or people with a god factor, god gene, DNA, certain DNA. Okay, so then I'm sitting here today and I'm like, why is it so important to find these 144,000? Well, the download I received was 144,000 can spark everyone they meet. They can literally awaken everyone they meet just by being, just by being. They can get people's third eye vibrating. <laughs> they can awaken people out of the matrix. And I think that sounds about fucking right. So while she was off, she's on to something. See, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. What did we read in Psalms 40 and 3? And he have put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. And that's what's happening. You're no longer entrapped in the matrix. Right? <laughs> And Esau is going to, he's going to react to that. Okay. <laughs> Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon, the revised of Rome, was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High. All right. And have the testimony of Yahweh See, and that's what we're doing. Okay. And it's through the message that we have that we're going to, what, uh, uh, galvanize the elect's mind not to take the charagma, not to bow the image to the knee of Baal. These are all commandments as well that we are, what, commanded to keep. All right? But the Lord is going to put a particular faith in each member of the elect, all right, that helps this to be guided as we're in this flesh. Ephesians 4, all right? And let's just jump to the point. All right, because he had to descend to the lower parts of the earth, be sacrificed, which gave us access to the Holy Spirit. All right, to to the the uh, as a foretaste, as the scriptures say. Was that in Ephesians, the first chapter? Right. When we heard this word, Ephesians 1 and 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, all right, after that ye have believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, all right, which you have to endure unto the end. Okay, we know about the promises now. We know about everything that's coming. We have a, 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 a taste of of the future through the Holy Spirit of what the Lord promises. We have a ability to go into the scriptures and see this is what this means. This is what that means. This is what's coming. This is what's going to happen if you do this. Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession. All right. Which, how was that church purchased to be brought back to the Heavenly Father? Through the blood of Yahweh Shai. That was the ransom. See? The purchased possession. All right. Uh, uh, as the scriptures say, we were not redeemed with corruptible things, but through the precious blood of Yahweh Shai. See? And then, when upon his return, each member that is covered under that blood will be granted access into the new covenant, man. All right? Well, we'll be given those new bodies, man. Okay? But we've been given the Holy Spirit as a foretaste, which keeps us on the path. Okay? Even when you get weak, Understanding what Yahweh Shah did, understanding what's to come, having the ability to hear from the prophets, the truth of the matter keeps you on the path, man. All right. So Ephesians 4 and, and 11. And he gave some apostles and some, and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. All right. For the perfecting of the saints. All right, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shai. All right, 
Ephesians 4 and 12 in the NLT, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Yahweh Shai. This will continue until we all come to the uh, such unity in our faith, all right, and knowledge of the Son of God that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full, complete, and standard in Yahweh Shai. And then the destruction is going to come, pursuant to Revelation, the seventh chapter. And it's happening. That process is taking place right now, all right? But the Lord has 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 put at the forefront of that process the men of the Lord which have the new song. The 144,000 now, when I say some could be in the spirit world, as these men are out teaching this message, you know, if you take the, the Haragma, and, and, and that's a big part of that message is uh, Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, his image and receive his mark, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. That's a big part of what these men would be saying. You see a big part of it see and who's i mean who's saying that in the earth it's a small group of men all right scattered throughout the four corners of the earth mainly here in babylon the great okay so with them having this message okay verse 12 says this means in the nlt that god's holy people must endure persecution patiently obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Yahweh Shai. And, and what you just read, all of these were commands. Fear the Lord. Okay, don't take the charagma. All right, uh, uh, the judgment is coming. Okay, because the, the, the devil is telling you to bow to him. See, so you, you're, you're what they call the third eye. Your spirit is unlocked. Okay, when you hear the message of these men and you're guided to do what is right. Okay. And there was another scripture here. All right. Let's see if I can find it. Blessed are the dead. Right. Verse 13. Because some of us are going to die. All right. Some of us are going to have to be beheaded for this message. Some of us, all right, may go back to the spirit world before Yahweh Shah returns. All right. So this is the point. Revelation 14 and 13, and I heard a voice, all right, from heaven saying, write down, blessed are those who die in Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh from now on, all right, yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, all right, for their good deeds follow them. So again, some of the 140, because a lot of people are looking around, we're trying to count 144, and it, it messes their spirit up that they don't see 144. Well, you got to understand, first and foremost, there's more happening than you know. All right. We walk by faith, not by sight. Secondly, some of the 144,000 could be in the spiritual realm. And when they're in the spiritual realm, what are they doing? The same thing that they're doing on earth. Revelation 6. And nine, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain from the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, all right, holy and true, does thou now judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay, and it says, I saw under the altar. What happens at an altar? A sacrifice. So in the heavens, these particular special spirits are under the altar, all right, because we know that there's a temple in the heavens. All right. And they're, they're created for a special, special purpose to come down into the earth and make their body a living sacrifice for the purpose of bringing the truth out, man. All right. So I just wanted to touch onto that. Um, you know, there's more, but the point was made. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, Bashim Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops and the elders, a great millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect and hopefully you were impacted by this uh, message. Shalom.